time to move on. We've been here for eight days on Waller Island in the Tiendas. I don't know if that's how you say it, but... And we've had a blast! Yeah, it's been nice. Carlos and Linda hanging out with them, doing some snorkeling. Getting to shore, just relaxing. It's kind of been a nice little downtime after the craziness of uh, debut. Yeah, yeah. So, but now we're back. We're going to head to Banda, and it's probably going to be a little crowded, but we'll... We've heard it's great, so we're excited. Yeah, and, and, diving? Diving, yeah, so maybe? Yes, we're going to go diving. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> well, that's worth getting a move on then. True. Yeah. We had a 160 mile overnight sail in front of us to get to Banda. By leaving early in the morning, we had plenty of time to arrive by sunset and could take things nice and easy. You look pretty laid back there. Chill. Very chill. It's kind of just exactly what we want on a passage, huh? Yeah, nice and easy so far. Uh, what are we doing with the sails at the moment? We are on a port tack just with the screecher. And, um, yeah, we got on the port tack to get around the island because dead downwind was putting us towards land. So we dodged a little bit and Still zooming along pretty well. Eight knots. Maybe even, well, peaking. Surfing down knots. the waves, I think. Yeah. That's good. Tonight is one of those nights I. I so wish that we could show you guys what we see. The, there's no stars because it's super cloudy, but the bioluminescence is just absolutely stunning. Um, when the wave is crashing up against the side of the boat, it's just like a million little sparkles that kind of trail down. And the coolest part is when you actually look uh, back, you can see two trails from the holes for like 30 meters that are just kind of glowing in the water. It is so freaking cool to see, but I, just, I, I try every time to get it on camera and it just never ever works, so I'm sorry. You just have to take my word for it, how cool it is, I guess. But the night's gone pretty well, I'd say. The, we had one boat that came past us, not on AIS, they were on radar, so we were able to track them via that. Um, but they had no known light combination that I'd ever seen before, so that was kind of weird to figure out where they were going. But at least the wind has cooperated. It stayed about 15 knots or less the whole way, so just as Screecher's been flying, and we're going to make it into Banda in plenty of time. So I kind of love it when it's a nice, easy passage. We only have to use the one sail. Looks like we had a few spillaways come on board last night. We've got one flying fish back there. Another one here. There is a third one up on the bow. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. There he is. And then there's a fourth one over here on the port side. We must have gone through a heck of a school of flying fish in the middle of the night. About 20 miles from Bonda right now, and we've had someone with an open mic for a good 15 minutes now. There aren't many things more annoying than a continual hot mic on Channel 16, but noise on the radio was one sign our passage was almost over. Looking 
like some land up in front of us. Yes, and it's quite windy. Yeah. Uh, and I've been listening to your reef in the sails a little bit. Yeah, we have the Genoa out with one reef in it. Uh, true wind speed of, well, it's 15 to 16 right now, but we are 90 degrees to the wind, so. Slightly different from the 150 we have been doing. Yes, yes. Well, we had to pass a giant rock, basically, <laughs> and hook to the left, so. Yeah, almost there. It looks like there's a uh, exodus in front of us, huh? Yep. Uh, our friends Eerie Spirit and Escape Velocity have just left this morning. But we still have friends, again, uh, Slow Flight and Mirani are here. So, yeah. So we'll be quite alone, huh? No, we're gonna have some fun. Yeah. And fair. internet again. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering how long it would take you to mention that at Portland. Eight, eight days without internet. And apparently our website's been down for most of it. And there was a earthquake and tsunami warning that people are asking if we're alive. We're alive! We're alive. Eight months late, but yeah, we're, we're good. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Anchoring in Bonda can be fairly tricky, with lots of steep ledges around. By arriving after most of the rally had left, there was a spot for us on the wharf. Only one problem though, it required us to med more, which isn't a skill we practice very often. Fortunately, having some friends available to help out makes the process much easier. Wow, that, that uh, wharf looks pretty close behind us, there, babe. We are men board. Oh, God, again. It's been like two years. Yeah, when was the last time we did that? Antigua. At the... What is it called? Lumber and it? Copper. Or something. It was Nelson's something. Uh, clearly, we have been to a few places since then. We can't even remember. Yeah. But, um, yeah. How'd it fortunately, go? Fortunately, we have our friends here. So they all came out and gave us a hand. Catching lines, tying us to the, yeah. the trees and stuff that are back there. Kimmy got one line, Carlos got another, Trevor's in the dinghy, and Linda's filming. So we have Team new evidence. effort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I gotta say, babe, you did awesome back in in here, so. Thank you. High five, well done. Did good on the line, sweetie. Whew. Thank you. Didn't hit anything, that's a victory. Did not hit anything. Still good, we'll see what happens when it tide drop six feet. Yeah, you're gonna have to keep a close eye on it, I think. Yep. Hey, you're looking extra chipper this morning. <sighs> yeah, we're going diving. Oh my goodness, really? Yes, very exciting. There are five of us going. Carlos from Mirni and Trevor and Kimmy from Slow Flight. Yeah, we've hired Eddie to take us to one of the local dive sites. To the local dive sites. I'll say two dives today, two right? Two tank dives today. Yeah, so busting out all the gear, getting all ready. Gonna be a great day. Yay, even if it's a little gray. That's it's all right. Fine. The first dive was at a site called Banda Blonda, which was a wall with some amazing coral and sponges. But the highlight was something we'd never seen before.
dive one in the books. What'd you think? It was good. Highlight? The wall. What was the highlight for you? The double ray. Well, of course. Obviously. I mean, that's just Amy's specialty there. Gotta but there love the rays. there are a lot of the um, huge... Uh, fans and stuff were out there. Well, there's the fans, but also the big, like, bar I mean, barrel ones. I forget what they're called exactly, but with the, like, you know, they're... It's pretty sweet. Yeah. And we get another dive too. One more. The second dive was at the base of the volcano on Oppie Island. It had erupted in 1988, and our dive was where the lava flow reached the sea. So they creatively named the site Lava Flow. Not only do the Banda Islands have some world-class diving, but there was another huge reason drawing us for a visit as well. I don't know if we can hear this, but uh, where are we going today? We're going to Nutmeg Plantation. Woo! We're doing a little Spice, Spice Island tour. tour. Got some pretty cool history on this island. Kind of excited to hear what it's all about. Yeah, do a little tasting. The Banda Islands earned their Spice Islands nickname thanks to that nutmeg. For centuries, the islands were the only source of it in the world. And thanks to its popularity in Europe and India, it was worth more by weight than gold. This, of course, brought in European colonial powers, primarily the Dutch and British. They would fight over the islands for almost 100 years before a treaty was signed in 1667. With that treaty, the British agreed to relinquish any claims over the Spice Islands in exchange for a little island now known as Manhattan. Parallel parking. <laughs> Our tour took us over to Banda Besar, the largest island in the group and we soon learned that nutmeg wasn't the only spice grown in the area. Can I smell? Yeah. <laughs> clove. Oh yeah. Clove, yeah. Wow. So what is this, babe? Clove. This is clove. It's been dried in the sun. And there's the green one over there that's fresh. But it's the very strong. The green one is the really dry tree. Smells good. <laughs> three years ago, maybe like that. Two years ago, three years ago. In addition to telling us about the spicy history of the islands, our guide Bakri was also eager to share some of his local culture with us, including something we could all relate to, boats. So, now we're at the special village. So this is the, uh, uh, we call Kora Kora. This is the boat, Kora Kora. Kora Kora. Kora Kora is the long boat. Okay. You know the special from this village? We have seven villages from the special for Kora Kora, traditional boat. And that one is special, this traditional boat from here, for this village. So you see the color is the different color every village, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you know, it's the special for race, every festi festival, November festival, November. Mm. November festival? Yeah. yeah. So the race. You, yeah, so you know, inside the sort of people by pedal, and one driver, and two commando, and one ram, one sing. And two people for special for 
take the water out. <laughs> In order to find the nutmeg, we had to do some climbing up what we all lovingly referred to as Rainbow Road. We're used to going up a max of five stairs at a time on Starry Horizons, so after we'd been climbing for almost 10 minutes, Bakri took pity on us and stopped to give us our first view of the spice we'd come here to see. <laughs> With their cute little uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This day, Monday is the. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> you know the best quality like this? Uh -huh. yep. Is the price high price? So when they split open on the tree and you can yeah. see they're black. Sometimes the people is the take it they open the trees. Okay. And sometimes the old one is the uh, open back knife. Mm. But the open the tree is the best, the best one. It's very old, ah. the best quality. So you know the red, the red color is the ready dry, hundred until hundred fifty thousand rupees for one kilo, for the maize. Okay, for the maize. For the nuts. 125 until 140,000 rupees for one kilo. 140,000 yeah. for one kilo of the Ready nuts. Ready dry, yeah. The nuts, for the nuts. For the, for the outside, they use for make, uh, the local people uh, make candy, you know candy? They put yeah, sugar. I had some, yeah. But we, we eat now is sour, yeah? Yeah. Not sweet. Right. But they make candy, they bring sugar, it's very sweet. Mm. At the top of the stairs, Bakri had a special treat for us. So this the well is this uh, uh, special for uh, sour, uh, for uh, that one for uh, sour and washing. So behind there is the special for drink water. Ah, okay. So you know the this place this the history the special every year they make big celebration mm -hmm. every year for ten years. Every year for ten years. Ten years. The big celebration for the uh, uh, washing inside. Ah. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> Properly refreshed, it was time to make our way up to the actual plantation. Boy! <laughs> it's the best quality. Mm, okay. It's the best color, very red and inside the black. Nice red, yeah. yeah. The black and red color. Mm. Yeah, that's very strange, the red around. Yeah. It's like the boat colors. The boat was black, red, and yellow, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's an almond, you said? Yeah. Almonds. Almonds right there? Yeah. Wow. It's the two color, the green color and the, the black color. Yeah. yeah. And the green is young. The green is young, it's the old. Okay. You see the old one is the pigeon is eating outside. Very interesting. After I open with the stone and we try. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Now we go to the stone. Okay. We go inside. <laughs> <laughs> It's coming? Mmm, yeah. Thank you. Ooh, thank Here you. That's some fresh almond right there. Fresh almond. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The cloves and nutmeg on the island we knew about, but Bakri had one more surprise spice in store for us. Cinnamon. Okay, this is the bar. Now you can smell it. Thank you. And we dry and roll. It, it in, dries? Yeah, the sun too hot sun is the roll. Oh, okay, it makes it but roll up. But not roll from here, it's yeah, the yeah. dry. Okay. The sun is very hot, it's the roll. Okay. Cool. So these trees we cut and still alive. Yes. Like this, a lot of Euro people come here, we cut and they, they uh, make this alive again. <laughs> It felt almost surreal walking through the history of the island. 
The Dutch were absolutely brutal with their treatment of the local Bondanese population. Some historians have estimated they massacred over 90% of the islanders as they enforced their monopoly on the spice trade. A particularly impactful relic for me was the bloodstone. There, anyone caught selling nutmeg to someone other than the Dutch or violating one of their regulations would swiftly lose a hand. To maintain control over the islands, the Dutch built several forts, and to wrap up our tour, Bakri took us to Fort Hollandia, which overlooked the harbor. This fort is for control, mm -hmm. for activity that, that to watch everything. Yeah, yeah. Because you know that's monopoly. Yeah. 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 So this is the name is Hollander Fort. This is the boat 1700. So this fort is the that's make this control for everything this activity the people because that's monopoly uh, in Banda. Mm -hmm. uh, that's get the a lot of spices from here. Yeah, yeah. Spice island. Spice island, <laughs> yeah. Is that a good view or what, babe? It is a good view. We're in a little Dutch fort here that uh, the Dutch built to keep an eye on everybody. Yeah, it sounds uh, like the Dutch were not very nice when they were here. Monopoly on the islands. Basically, they killed everybody and took over. The crazy history. Yeah, but it's a nice view of the town there and the mosque and then the, the cool volcano with the lava flow. You do like that lava flow, don't you? I like the lava flow. It's neat. The day was a great one, and both Amy and I were left feeling like we'd gotten exactly what we'd hoped for by coming here to Bonda. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed our video on Bonda. We had a blast there. We really enjoy getting to spend time with our friends and exploring the Spice Islands of Indonesia. There's a couple other things that we did there that we didn't get to talk about in the video. And I have some information about how to get to Banda if you don't have your own boat. You can check down in the links below for my blog post. We are in Sri Lanka, which is very exciting. We got to Trincomalee a couple days ago and we will be spending a few weeks in here exploring Sri Lanka. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.